Here's how I lost $15,226.26 by being soft. Let's go through exactly how this happened. I purchased a home. I found a young family from Venezuela who was excited to move in and I didn't do enough due diligence to make sure that it was a good fit. They signed the papers, gave them the key, then they moved in. They paid a security deposit, and in the first month, they said they were a little tight on cash, and they could pay half and pay a little bit later. I was willing to work with them, and so I did. And then what happened is you give somebody an inch, and they take a whole mile. They had moved in on September 1st, and by October, they were about a month and a half behind. I was talking to them about it, they said they were working it out, and they'd be able to pay me shortly. And then come November, they'd only paid an additional 500 of about 5,000 that they owed. This is a young family. There's a mom in her 40s, there's a son who's in his 20s, and then they have a daughter who had a kid sometime in November, December, which made me have a little more sympathy, so I decided to work with them on this. I had a long, hard conversation with them. They said they're working through it, they're gonna be able to pay everything. Let's just go through the holidays and reevaluate in January. In hindsight, complete red flag, and I shouldn't have done it, but I was trying to be kind and I was naive, so I did. And guess what happened in January? The same story in January, and February. And this is where it got difficult because I'm in a situation where if I kick them out, I guarantee that I don't make any money. But if I let them stay, maybe they would still pay. At least that's what I thought. And turns out that's a fallacy because it didn't happen. Let me tell you how the story ends, then we'll get into the lessons that I learned from this. On the last day of March, they moved out. Everything was in good condition. They cleaned but they didn't pay any money. As they moved out, we made a payment plan, they signed it, and I have a video of them signing this agreement. I wanted to make it very possible for them to pay it back, so it was only $500 a month until the total was paid back with zero interest unless they have a late fee. On May 1st, they said they were having a hard time getting work in California where they'd be able to pay me soon, so let's wait for the first payment until June 1st. Then June came and guess what happened? They said they needed a few more days, and after that, they said that they're not gonna be able to pay anything, and then since then, they've ghosted me. Now, I worked with them the entire time that they were living in the property. I reminded them often and I was very clear that if this was not paid, I have no choice but to go to a small claims court to realize the loss or else it hurts me more. But what I didn't do is I wasn't direct and strong enough at the very beginning to both screen tenants and then to hold somebody accountable and allow them to live in my house for free for months. That is how I lost $15,226.26 by not holding people accountable, here's the lessons that I learned from that. One, do your due diligence with anything. With work, with a job you wanna get, with a home you wanna purchase, with clothes you wanna buy, just make sure it's what you expect and the expectations are clear for both parties. Number two, if you have an agreement and it's signed and both parties agree to it and one person does not hold up their side of the bargain, immediately you need to take whatever legal action is necessary. Don't be unreasonable and be fair, but do not allow somebody to have an inch if that is something they signed to and agreed to. Number three, you are 100% accountable for everything that happens in your life. The reason I do that is if I'm accountable for what happens in my life, I'm also able to change it. I don't want to assign blame or responsibility to anybody outside of me because if I say it's the market, he didn't hold up his end of the bargain. What ends up happening is I'm the one who loses. You should take the viewpoint that anything that happens to you is 100% your fault because that gives you power to change it. If you have any questions or experiences, let me know below. You're awesome, see ya.